Hello everyone. In this video I want to talk about standardized regression and path coefficients that are greater than an absolute value of 1 and also about suppression effects. In case you're new to this channel, on this channel I present weekly statistics tutorials usually related to structural equation modeling or other latent variable models and often related to the MPLUS software. If this is something that interests you then please subscribe to this channel and also if you like this video then please hit the like button. One question that I frequently encounter as a statistician looking at other people's analyses or hearing about other people's data um, analytic problems is when people say I have a strange regression result or I have a strange result in my path model where one of my standardized coefficients exceeds the value of 1 or is smaller than negative 1 and is this a problem? Is this an improper solution? Does this mean I have a Hayward case? Does this mean the solution is invalid? And so in this video I want to clarify a little bit what um, can happen when you have so-called suppression effects or also we can say when you have high collinearity between independent variables, high correlations between independent variables and that this is something that does not necessarily mean that your results are invalid. And I want to show you this based on an example in the MPLUS software. Here you can see an MPLUS output file for a pretty simple two-variable linear regression model with two independent variables, so a multiple regression model with two predictor variables x1 and x2 and one dependent variable y. And so you can see in this model here in M+, plus, I regressed y on x1 and x2. So it's a standard linear regression analysis to find out are these significant predictors of the variable y. And you could have a similar model in terms of a path analytic model with more than one dependent variable where this could also um, or a submodel could look like this. So what I'm showing you here is not only something that is relevant to standard regression models with a single outcome variable but also applies to path analytic models with more dependent variables and also applies to structural equation models with latent variables. So let's take a look at the output file for this um, example here. You can see the sample size is 200 so pretty decent sample size for a regression model and when we take a look at our descriptive statistics first we see the correlation matrix and this is one that I fabricated to make this example easy to follow and um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you couldn't find such a correlation matrix or a similar correlation matrix in practice and so what you can see here in this example is that in my example correlation matrix I have a pretty small correlation between the dependent variable y and the first predictor x1 the correlation is only 0.1 and in fact this correlation is not even statistically significant here even though the sample size is 200 so it's not significantly statistically significantly different from zero. Furthermore you can see that the second predictor variable x2 is substantially correlated with the dependent variable 0.6 that's a strong correlation at least in my field uh, psychology we would consider this to be a high bivariate association between two variables and then also you can see that x1 and x2 are very highly correlated. So the two predictors are correlated 0.8 and that is a pretty strong or very strong um, relationship of the independent variables. So you can see already we have a little bit of a collinearity issue here so those variables are strongly related. Now let's take a look at the regression results and see what we get in M+. You would get the same results in SPSS or any other program that is capable of doing linear regression. So let's take a look at what we get here in terms of the model results and let's focus on the standardized solution in this case. That doesn't necessarily mean that you should ignore the unstandardized parameter estimates. You really shouldn't but um, I just want to focus on the standardized results here because those are the ones that often um, make people nervous and make people confused because you can see here in this case 
we have a negative coefficient for the regression of y on x1. So as you can see, y regressed on x1 has a negative standardized coefficient of um, negative 1.056. And so that is maybe a little bit astonishing in two regards. First of all, um, a lot of people would say, ah, the standardized coefficient shouldn't be smaller than negative 1. So that is an improper solution. That's what many people think. And then second, also what is confusing is that the bivariate association or the zero order correlation that we saw in the correlation matrix was positive. It was 0.10, it was not statistically significant. However, it was positive, it was not negative. So that might also be confusing to people. So let's address the first issue here first. Can this coefficient legitimately be smaller than negative one? That would be the first question that a lot of people would ask. And the answer is yes, there's nothing that keeps a partial regression coefficient, a standardized partial regression coefficient from being smaller than negative one. There really isn't. So this is not something that means that this is a Haywood case or an improper solution. It is, it is a possibility. When you have highly correlated independent variables or predictors, then the coefficients are not bound, or in general, they're not bound um, between the interval from negative one to one. They're not correlation coefficients. Keep that in mind. Those are partial regression coefficients, and partial regression coefficients are not the same thing as zero order correlations or bivariate correlations. So they're not restricted to that range. And when you have a collinearity effect that is strong like here, where the predictors are correlated 0.8, then so-called suppressor phenomena can occur where one predictor suppresses irrelevant variance in the other predictor and so say enhances the ability of the other predictor to be useful predictor. And this is actually something that you can see here very clearly because you can see that the p-value here at the end given by m plus is very very small for the first predictor even though as I told you the zero order correlation of 0.10 between x1 and y was not significant, but the beta coefficient is. And so that is because here in this situation, there's a suppressor effect where the other predictor is strongly correlated, or this predictor is strongly correlated with the other predictor, and therefore it enhances the ability of the other predictor to predict the criterion and itself also, the predictor itself also becomes significant then. And so this is another thing that a lot of people find very confusing, but it is legitimate, it is okay to, for a partial regression coefficient to both be significant even though not both of the zero order correlations with the criterion um, may be significant. So this is another interesting result here. You can also see that x2 also has a standardized regression coefficient that is not in the range between negative 1 and 1. It exceeds 1 and is 1.444. And again, that's okay. There's, that is not something that points to an improper solution. It is due to the suppressor effect here, to the collinearity effect. And you can see that the predictor is highly significant. So both of these predictors are useful for predicting uh, or explaining, accounting for variance in the dependent variable here due to this suppressor phenomenon. You can also see that the R squared, the overall R squared for the model is not improper. It does not exceed one. It's 0 0.761, so it's legitimate. It's a legitimate um, or within the legitimate range of R squared values, so that's also okay. And notice also that M plus did, did not give any kind of warning message about an improper solution or anything like that, because this isn't an improper solution. There's no negative variance or residual variance estimate. There's no R squared or correlation that exceeds one. And so, therefore, this is a perfectly legitimate solution where you have collinearity. This may be a suppressor effect. It may be substantively meaningful or not, but this is what you get. And so this is not necessarily something that needs to make you worry. Or when a reviewer maybe of a journal, journal article says, oh, this is not okay, this can't be true, then 
you can uh, point them to the literature that clearly shows that standardized regression of half coefficients need not be within the range of negative one to positive one. Now, that being said, of course, you should still check that everything makes sense in the data, that these high correlations are expected. You should also take a look at standard errors of your regression coefficients because sometimes collinearity can make standard errors abnormally large, can lead to um, uncertainty, increased uncertainty of the estimation, can lead to wide confidence intervals, and that may not be desirable. So sometimes that can be an issue, but it is not necessarily always an issue when you find results like that, where you have standardized coefficients that are um, looking like the ones here. I hope you found this video useful in case you have maybe encountered this issue in your own data or wondered about this. If you like this video, then please again hit the like button and um, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already done so, and I'll see you next time.